Welcome back to the SIE podcast. Today, we are going to share a quiz with you that corresponds with an audio lesson from the full series of audio lessons for the Securities Industries Essentials podcast, Audio Lessons for the SIE exam. The full series of audio lessons that correspond to these quizzes is available at siepodcast.com. This quiz consists of questions which are answered in lesson five of the Securities Industries Essentials podcast, audio lessons for the SIE exam. This is a quiz on fixed income part one. Question one. Which of the following is an example of a fixed income investment? A. A bond. B. A government note. C. Collateralized mortgage obligations. Or D. All of the above. And the answer is D. All of the above. A bond, a government note, a collateralized mortgage obligation. All of them are fixed income investments. Question two. In fixed income investments, the par value blank A is greater than the maturity value, B is less than the maturity value, C is equal to the maturity value, or D varies with the maturity value but with no general trend. And the answer is C, equal to the maturity value. Question 3. Maturity value is the value the investor gets when his fixed income investment matures. A, true. B, false. And the answer is true. A. Question four. This is the date when the investor gets back the par value of his fixed income investment. And the choices are A, call date. B, declaration date. C, maturity date. Or D, payable date? And the answer is C, the maturity date. You also might get your investment back at a call date. However, that's not guaranteed. But you will get your investment back on the maturity date. Question 5. Fixed income investments have stated interest rates except for blank. And the choices are A, serial bonds, B, series bonds, C, term bonds, or D, zero coupon bonds. And the answer is D, zero coupon bonds. Question six. U.S. government bonds have no call features. A, true, B, false. And the answer is true. It's one of the few bonds that you can get that do not have call features. And therefore, you can make long-term plans by buying U.S. government bonds, U.S. treasuries. Question 7. Sinking funds are blank. A. Bonds that have depreciated in par value. B. A portion of money set aside every year to buy back the issued bonds. C. The difference between the bond's par value and the yield to maturity. Or D. All of the above. And the answer is B, a portion of money set aside every year to bonds. That's called a sinking fund. Question 8. Which of the following is associated with collateralized mortgage obligations? A, Ginny Mays. B, government bills. C, sinking funds. Or D, all of the above. And the answer is a Ginny May. A Ginny May is a collateralized mortgage obligation. Question 9. These bonds are bought at a discount and mature at par value. The choices are A, serial bonds, B, series bonds, C, term bonds, or D, zero coupon bonds. And the answer is D, zero coupon bonds. You buy those at a discount, you don't get any current income, but the bond matures at par value. Question 10. These are bonds that have varying maturity dates that carry different interest rates. A. Serial bonds. B. Series bonds. C. Term bonds. Or D. Zero coupon bonds. And the answer is A. Serial bonds. Question 11. Which of the following does a zero coupon bond have? A. An interest rate. B. An interest payment date. 
C, a discount, or D, all of the above? And the answer is C, a discount. It is a bond issued at a discount to maturity value. It pays no interest, but it matures at par value. Question 12. Which of the following does a term bond have? A, interest rate, B, interest payment date, C, maturity date, or D, all of the above? And the answer is D, all of the above. An interest rate, an interest payment date, and a maturity date. Question 13. In a zero coupon bond, the difference between the value of the bond when it is bought and the value of the bond when it matures is the calculated yield. A, true, B, false. And the answer is A, true. That's how you calculate the yield is the difference between the market price and the maturity price, and the maturity value, I should say. And the market price is always going to be at a discount to maturity value. Question 14. Serial bonds are issued in a series of steps according to the cash needs of the issuer. A, true, B, false. And the answer is B, false. It is the series bonds that are issued in a series of steps according to the cash needs of the issuer. Question 15. In the normal yield curve environment, blank. A. The shorter the maturity on a fixed income investment, the lower the par value. B. The shorter the maturity on a fixed income investment, the higher the par value. C. The shorter the maturity on a fixed income investment, the lower the yield. And D, the shorter the maturity on a fixed income investment, the higher the yield. And the answer is C, the shorter the maturity on a fixed income investment, the lower the yield. That's in a normal yield curve. Sometimes you get inverted yield curves, but in a normal yield curve, the shorter the maturity, the lower the yield. Question number 16, in an inverted yield curve, the shorter the maturity on a fixed income investment, the lower the par value. B, the shorter the maturity on a fixed income investment, the higher the par value. C, the shorter the maturity on a fixed income investment, the lower the yield. D, the shorter the maturity on the fixed income investment, the higher the yield. And the answer to this one is D, the shorter the maturity on a fixed income investment, the higher the yield. This is in an inverted yield curve, a fairly rare event, but something that does happen on occasion. Question 17. When buying a discounted bond in the secondary market, which of the following is the correct set of yield in order of increasing value? A. Coupon yield, current yield, yield to maturity. B. Yield to maturity, coupon yield current yield, C, current yield, coupon yield, yield to maturity, or D, all three yields would have equal value? And the answer is A, a coupon yield, a current yield, and a yield to maturity. Question 18. When buying a bond at par, which of the following is the correct set of yield in order of increasing value? A, the coupon yield, the current yield, and the, then the yield to maturity. B, the yield to maturity, the coupon yield, and the current yield. C, the current yield, the coupon yield, and the yield to maturity. Or D, all three yields would have equal value. And the answer is D, all of the three yields would have equal value because it's at par. There's no discount or premium in the price that you paid for the bond. Question 19, bond accretion is the devaluation of the bond at par when the bond was bought at a premium. A, true, B, false. And the answer is B, false. Bond depletion is the devaluation of the bond at par when the bond was bought at a premium. Question 20, in a tax-exempt bond at a premium, 
the amortized portion of the premium is deducted from the income of the buyer of the bond. A true, B false. The answer is B false. The amortized portion of the premium is not deducted from the income. Thank you for listening. I hope you did well. If you need to review this topic, please re-listen to this lesson from the full series of audio lessons, which are available at siepodcast.com. Best of luck in your studies. All quizzes and content of the SIE podcast are copyrighted by Franz Amason, and all rights are reserved. No duplication is allowed without express written permission by Franz Amason.